Mahal kan ni Yesus, tiba. Selamat, aku. Here speaking. Thank you for inviting me here. And uh, it's always it's important for me to to let God use me, not be the speaker, but just the interpreter. Let the Holy Spirit do the speaking through me. So let's bow our heads and say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for this Sabbath day. We pray that you will help us learn more and more each each day. But on this special day that we've been learning about you, that we will continue to learn from the, uh, the Scriptures, the Word of God from you, Lord, speaking through me, speaking through the, using the Holy Spirit to touch our hearts. So, wow, so everybody understands English. Yes. It's amazing. Amazing. Beautiful, wonderful. Well, I'm almost embarrassed to say that I've made 12 trips to the Philippines. I mean, who makes 12 trips here? Um, that's a lot of trips across the ocean, and it's a big gap between here and the United States. It's clear on the other side of the world. And I've actually flown non-stop 17 hours. It's it's not a very fun flight. So I like to fly halfway, maybe Japan or, you know, Korea. And then at least I get a little break. Or go to Hawaii and then to Japan and then here. Get to stretch my legs a little bit. But um, in those trips here, I've been trying to understand how to be effective in my in my words. Uh, I am dreaming of the day that I'll learn Tagalog fluently, Saya. Now I'm thinking Waray Waray. But at least Tagalog, if I can learn Tagalog, that'll be really great because part of it's language and the rest of it is how do I make a point? How do I make it clear? How do I bring something so valuable, life-changing, that that's really a matter of life and death to a people in a kind way that will be effective and, uh, and work. I came up with an acronym called REAL, R-E-A-L. God's healing methods are real. So we've got an R, E, A, L, which means R for redemptive, E, affordable, E, 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 R, E, redemptive, oh, effective, okay, affordable, and lasting. Those are that's an acronym that I made up myself, just to kind of come up with some way that God has a healing method. Um, that is real. And using those acronyms, we can come up with those few words. But I was um, learning from a professor of theology, a teacher of pastors in the United States, and he said to start my lectures with this Bible verse here, Romans 14. So if anyone has a Bible, turn your Bible to Romans chapter 14. I usually like a chalkboard or something like that. It's kind of, I feel empty if I don't have my PowerPoint chalkboard or anything here, but uh, I'll, I'll pretend here. So Romans 14. And different translations use different words. This is um, King James, uh, let's see, the Gideon Bible. I think it's uh, New New King James from It says, receive one who is weak in faith, but not to dispute over doubtful things. Um, what's interesting, when a a medicine corporation or organization sells a medicine, 
they have a label. And the different governments, the Philippine government, the U.S. government, they require um, a warning label. It's usually in fine print, really small print. And if it's an advertisement on television, they will talk about the product. And then at the very end, the, um, the salesperson or the, in the advertisement, they'll go into a hyper speed, super fast, delete, 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 you and so they'll say it like this. I'll do an example. This medicine cures diabetes. And then really fast it'll say, but also causes blindness, um, uh, dizziness, fainting, and sometimes even death. But super, super fast. We call that the side effect, the side effect of the medicine. But that's the, yeah, the adverse effect. But that's the fine print. So what I'm proposing here is Romans 14 is the fine print of, of, a, of a health lecture. Mm -hmm. It says, receive one who is weak in faith, but not to dispute over doubtful things. Mm -hmm. For one believes he may eat all things. One translation says, one believes he may eat meat, but he who is weak only eats vegetables. Let not him who eats despise him or judge him who does not eat. And let not him who does not eat judge him who eats. For God hath received him. Who are you to judge another's servant? To his own master he stands or he falls. Indeed, he may be made to stand. For God is able to make him stand. So before I give a health lecture, I like to read that because in some cultures, they feel that you're perhaps judging. They get defensive uh, in what they eat. And in the United States, there is nothing more in a people. The New START program was started by um, a Seventh-day Adventist institution in California. Who wants a New START in life? Would you like a new start? Any problems in your in your life? Would you like to have a fresh start, a new start, a good start, a better start? Well, new start has eight letters, and there just so happens to be in the writings of Sister Ellen G. White eight health principles that are found in a number of books: Ministry of Healing, Councils on Diet and Food, and so we're going to talk about those particular principles. Who would like to hear what they are? Okay. So New Start, N-E-W-S-T-R-A-R-T. What would the N stand for? Does anyone know or could you guess? Nutrition. Nutrition, okay. Now, when it comes to nutrition, nutrition, I say, well, I could talk about that for five minutes, I could talk about it for an hour, I could talk about it for eight hours. Nutrition is that, I wouldn't say complicated, it's that broad, it's that interesting. It's loaded with information, that subject alone. But I'm going to approach it from a perspective of simplicity. The lacto vegetarians, vegans, you know, and vegans seem to judge everybody because they're the strictest. So, since I'm a vegan, I want you to know that I'm not judging anybody. I just choose that particular diet um, for a reason, and that's what we're going to talk about now. So, if I had a chalkboard, this is kind of an echoey sound here, but let me... Maybe I'll turn... I'll just, I'll just talk a little bit... Uh, I'll just talk a little bit closer. I usually walk around, so it's kind of hard for me to stand here, <laughs> but that's okay. So, how do I, the reason I'm, I'm assuming, oops, I'm assuming this was some sort of a health, health talk, because when I left, um, a number of people, including this young lady here, started asking questions about health and based on Pastor Resos' um, introduction to me, and so I'm <laughs> deciding this would be, you know, appropriate to follow up on some some healthful tips and information because uh, really our body is a gift from God and it's given to us to, to serve Him and to live for Him. So it's an important subject. 
I decided, uh, I was thinking about this, and one good way to start a health lecture is to describe an automobile. You could talk about a motorcycle. You could talk about pretty much any kind of equipment. Uh, you could talk about, you know, a stereo system, a DVD player. But basically, something that is made with human hands that is serving a purpose. Okay? So let's go with an automobile. Um, let's say it's a, a Japanese automobile. Now, that automobile was designed with a purpose. And it was designed by engineers that figured out exactly what type of oil, for example, in the fuel. A diesel engine cannot run on gasoline, and a gasoline engine cannot run on diesel. Now, there's some variables in the diesel. You can put coconut oil, you can put some vegetable oils, and if it's heated right and under certain conditions, you can change the fuel a little bit. But ultimately, that engine was designed by a team of engineers to operate a specific way with a specific fuel. And isn't it interesting that us humans, we treat automobiles a lot better than we do our own bodies in so many ways. Because we look at the manual and we're very, very careful. What kind of oil? What kind of fuel? What kind of you know, water do we put in the radiator? Uh, what's the tire pressure supposed to be? These are things to take care of our automobile so that it lasts a long time. Now, in New York, a taxi car will drive over a million miles. They're known to drive a million miles because the operators change the oil every week. Every week, new oil, brand new oil, special additives. Um, you know, they really take good, good care of a car. Normally, these cars run to one to 200,000 miles or 300,000 kilometers, and then they're dead. They break down. But because they take good care of them, they last a long time. So what I'm posing here and uh, suggesting is that our body was created by a God that loves us. Jesus created us. And when he created us, he put some thought, some engineering, some design, some purpose, real purpose, into the, into the making of humanity and human beings. And, you know, God's original purpose was not for us to be sick. It was not for us to be in this world suffering. And there was not to be sin. Okay, I can take some of that water now. I've been thirsty for a long time. Thank you very much.